it is unquestionably time to talk about Motley Crue. If you asked me what my favorite band is in the history of the world, as I think most of you would probably guess, I'm going to say Kiss until you remind me that Motley Crue is out there. And then I'm going to say Motley Crue. You mother... And uh, that's just the way it is. I mean, always has been. Since 83, when I heard Shout the Devil for the first time. So, um, like I did with Kiss, I'm going through the Motley Crue albums now, uh, an album at a time reviewing each album and giving them a ranking. Uh, I am not touching the John Karabi album from 94. I don't give two shits about that album. It's a great album. It is not a Motley Crue album. Uh, from the day Motley Crue got into Hit Parader, Circus, Rip Magazine, Faces, all those magazines, they told you themselves, all of them, in those interviews, Motley Crue is these four guys. These four guys. If any of those guys is not able to be in the band for some reason, that just wouldn't be Motley Crue anymore. That's exactly what I grew up believing, because that's what they told me. I still feel that way, and it's never going to change. All right, so ranking the Motley Crue albums, studio albums. And that means there are eight albums to talk about. All right, so as you can see, album number eight is probably not too hard to figure out. Um, I About a year ago, when I started the channel, I did post a Motley, Ranking the Motley Crew Albums video. Uh, I also did a Motley Crew's 40th anniversary video. Uh, both of those videos have a lot of views relatively speaking, for the channel. But my views have changed a little bit since I ranked them before. Mm -hmm. um, so these videos, if you're interested in that sort of thing, are worth your time to watch because there have been some changes. But number eight is still... Theater of fucking pain. Yes, this is the original 1985 pressing that I bought at the music store the day it was released. Uh, fond memories. Uh, still has my merch ad. The ad for the Motley Crue Sin Club. And I did send off and got this in the mail. Uh, I never actually joined up, but I did request additional information. Got these nice fake signatures down at the bottom. I mean, they're the real copies of the signatures. We all know the fans are where it's at double exclamation point. Without you, there wouldn't be a Motley Crue. It's like six, It's like in 16th century theater where the court jester would perform for the king. If he wasn't entertaining, he was beheaded. Uh-oh. You know, dot, 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 theater of pain. It's the same with the crew. 
if we don't entertain our fans, uh-oh, we're beheaded. It's entertainment or death. So we'd all like to say, we love you. And we know we can keep on rocking our asses off together for a long, long time to come. Yippee! The Motley Crue Sin Club. And if you open it up, it has even more merch. And uh, another thing to send off for the Motley Crue Sin Club. For all you sinners, Motley Crue has started their SIN Club. Here's how you can join and what you will receive. Your Sin Club membership package with membership card. Good for special tickets and seating at Motley concerts. Crew biographies, photos, and current newsletter. Crew will send you a newsletter every three months. The newsletter will feature current color and black and white photos, behind the scenes facts, and up-to-date information on our tour dates and the album releases. There will be contests for Sin Club members to win autographed photos, albums, and posters of Motley Crue, as well as chances to win backstage passes where winners can meet Crue in person. All crew merchandise, past and present, will be available to Sin Club members through the mail. Don't delay. Crew wants you to be a part of their Sin Club. Wow. That's awesome, right? Totally cool. And uh, on the merch form, let's see, you could get that cool door poster for eight bucks. Uh, you can get a tour program for six, a calendar for eight ninety five, a video, which was the Motley Crue uncensored video. Oh my, legendary! For nineteen ninety five, oh, you could get a Motley Crue bumper sticker for two dollars and fifty cents, a keychain for three dollars, uh, and you could get. Um, regular t-shirts for $12 and the tie-dyed t-shirt for $20. Wow. Totally awesome. Now, I never ordered any of that shit. Uh, I just went to the mall and found what I could. But anyway, ah, yes, Theater of Pain. You know, I have to say, um, I really feel like they did a pretty good job with the packaging. This is quality packaging on this album. Uh, I just don't like the image. sound of the album. Uh, I think it sounds fucking awful, in fact. And I mean, I've got plenty of friends who don't feel that way, and I totally appreciate that. In fact, I wish I felt that way too. I really, really do. And that's why I'm about to say all the shit I'm about to say about this album. Because to me, as great as it is, because it is Motley Crue, it ain't Motley Crue, and it sure as hell isn't any of the other Motley Crue albums. Okay, so first elephant in the room, the sound. And I can basically, I mean, 
it's the, the sound of the entire album, really. But I can basically say the whole thing for me boils down to mixed guitar sound. On this album, look at that image. On this album, mixed guitar sound, If it was a fart, it's a fart after you've had like a gallon of steak sauce. Hmm? Whereas this is like a fart after you had a gallon of peanut butter. Hmm. I just can't. I'm not speaking from personal experience. I'm just saying it doesn't sound appealing, does it? I mean, peanut butter is appealing, but peanut butter farts, if you could hear them, and you probably can. Yeah. All right. So anyway, theater comes out in 85. Me and my best buddy at the time, we run to the music store because we know it's coming out. We go that day. Uh, I buy the album and the cassette. We run out. I pop it in the, the tape deck in the car. We just sit there. We don't even drive home. We sit there in the parking lot. And we listen to the entire tape. Uh, start to finish. Because we're dumb. And we're 15 and dumb at 15 is okay. We didn't mind. So we listened to it, and uh, the first song, City Boy Blues, starts to play. And we're like listening to it, and we're looking at each other, and we're like, yeah, it's great. It sounds as good as Shout and Two Best for Love, doesn't it? Well, I mean, it took me at least a couple of years. I think I got clarity when Girls came out. And when Girls came out, I was like, no, theater pain doesn't sound as good. Girls also doesn't sound as good, but it sounds a thousand times better than Theater of Pain. I'm sorry if you disagree. I really am. I love this album, too, because it's Motley Crue. But based on the album in and of itself, I just can't. I can't give it a high review. I just can't. So let's... I don't know what else to tell you. The whole album, because of mixed guitar sound, to me, sounds exactly like it looks. Bright pink and fucking orange. And who the hell wants to look at that or listen to it? No thanks. All right. So anyway, the songs. Track one, City Boy Blues. I mean, it's okay. It's an okay tune. Uh, I give it three stars because it's okay. But I couldn't give it four or five stars because it's not... It's not what I want from this band. It's not what I want from Motley Crue. I, what happened to Shout at the Devil and... Bastard, Red Hot, and 
So now it, it's like shout at the devil and too fast for love. Those were like Motley Crue, if you met them in a dark alleyway and they had a knife and they were going after somebody and by God, they were going to find them. Theater of Pain is like the motley crew you take to meet your parents. And they want your parents to buy their concert tickets. So they're really nice. And they're shiny. And they're pretty. And they're polite. And they're goofy. And they're fun. I didn't need that Motley Crue. If, if they had been that Motley Crue a couple of albums later, maybe I could have eased into it and forgiven them for it. But right after Shout at the Devil and Too Fast for Love, go fuck yourself. I don't want that Motley Crue. I like this album. I still get it out and enjoy it and listen to it. And I, but not very fucking often. All right, track two, Smoking in the Boys' Room. Woo! Yeah, it'll seem to have one of those days when everyone's on your case from your teacher all the way down to your best girlfriend. Well, you know, I used to have this bad heart. Why? Why did you have to do this to us? To me? I bought every fucking Motley Crue thing I could find in 83, 84, 85. This album comes out and I'm like, yeah, um, yeah, that's my favorite band. Smoking in the Boys Room. Wow. I remember at the time it seemed like a good decision. No, it wasn't a good decision. Vince Neil had been begging the band to cover Set Me Free by Sweet. smoking in the boys room instead which I'm not saying was a horrible decision it, it would have been a decent decision I guess again that fucking sound just ruins this whole record for me oh, maybe it would have been okay for any other band but man those guitars on the first two albums holy crap and the playing is great don't get me wrong. I love Nick. I love the riffs, most of them. But that fucking guitar sound just gets under my skin. All right. So smoking with the boys room, I was really kind and gave it three stars. Because I, at the time, it was fun. If I watch the video, I still like it. But if, if I'm just listening to the CD for some reason, I skip it. All right, track three, Louder Than Hell. Pretty 
much everybody I know, even if they dislike Theater of Pain, still likes this song and they're like, yeah, that sounds like Shout the Devil. No, it doesn't. It really doesn't. Uh, it kind of sounds like it could have been on Shout of the Devil, but it's not as good as anything on Shout of the Devil. Anything. I gave Louder Than Hell three stars. I, I was tempted to go four because at least it sounds like they were trying to be heavy. Track four, keep your eye on the money. Another three stars. Um, as my friends and I have discussed, Many times, uh, not a terrible song, but the end, keep your eye on the money. It just goes on for like 20 minutes, even though the song's only four and a half minutes long. How did they do that? I don't know. I mean, I, I appreciate what they were attempting. I'm not sure they achieved it. Three stars. So that's three stars for everything so far. Um, track five, thank God, Home Sweet Home. You know I'm a dreamer. But my heart's a gold. I had a runaway high. Uh, meaningful, important, beautiful song. Super meaningful and important to me and my friends in 1985. Uh, I gave it five stars. No doubt about it. By far the best song on this album. Five stars. Love that mix solo. Uh, they re remixed it. I think re-recorded it for the Decade of Decadence album, which I love that, that version. But, I mean... There was nothing wrong with this version, really. Track six, Tonight We Need a Lover. Uh, I gave this one four stars. The way everybody else seems to feel about Louder Than Hell, I feel about this song. I really dig this tune. Um, if it didn't sound like somebody barfing uh, and unleashing peanut butter farts at the same time while they're bent over barfing in the toilet, I would really like this song. But, I mean, I still like it. Um, pretty cool lyrics, pretty heavy, uh, pretty cool riff. Uh, I just like it. Four stars. Track seven, use it or lose it. <laughs> just not crazy about it. I've tried several times. I know it's kind of heavy. That riff sounds kind of shitty to me. I don't care for it. Three stars. Track eight, Save Our Souls.
three stars. I mean, it's, it's heavy, it's cool. Uh, track nine, raise your hands to rock. Almost everybody I've seen review this album hates this song. I do not. I love this song. It's my second favorite tune on the album. It's the only other track, spoilers, besides Home Sweet Home, that got five stars from me. Why did it get five stars? Not necessarily for the chorus, but definitely for the verses. And uh, I just love that acoustic intro. Uh, it's, it's an awesome tune. And then the final track on the album, track 10, Fight for Your Rights. Three stars. I mean, it's okay. It's a good tune. So the basic point I'd like to make is I don't hate this album. I love this album. I still listen to this album because I still haven't stopped trying to give it another chance to be what I wanted it to be at the time. And it just never has been. That's the issue. That doesn't mean it's terrible. That just means it's not what I was expecting or what I was hoping for or what I was wanting. If it had been, I suppose I'd be thrilled. But, nope. Anyway, um, a total of 3.5 stars. For Theater of Pain. That is the lowest of the Motley Crue albums. Unless you insist that I should talk about the Karabi album from 94, in which case I like this one better. All right. So that's album number eight of eight in the Motley Crue catalog. I will be right back with album number seven. What will that be? Put your prediction in the comments. Let's see who's got this figured out. Remember, my original rankings have changed. All right, out of here, Robert. Fuck this. Thing.